Welcome to the Ecological Forecasting Initiative 2020 meeting focused on coordinating the NEON Enabled Forecasting Challenge. I am Quinn Thomas, faculty at Virginia Tech and the lead of the project supporting this workshop. This workshop is part of a recently funded National Science Foundation Research Coordination Network that I will introduce during this presentation. On behalf of the project steering committee, myself and Jody Peters, our project manager, we welcome you to this virtual workshop and thank you for joining us. The move to a virtual workshop has created a powerful opportunity to engage a larger and more diverse community in ecological forecasting at the beginning of the five-year coordination project. We are excited about what we will accomplish together over the next two days. The 21st century has been and will continue to be characterized by major environmental changes to the ecosystem services upon which society depends. Anticipating and responding to these changes requires development of novel approaches that integrate data and models to make explicit predictive forecasts in real time. These forecasts then help guide decisions toward our preferred outcomes as depicted on the right. To address this need, we must move to predicting nature like we predict weather. Much like you use weather forecasts to make weekend plans or prepare for major storms, forecasts of ecological processes can provide similar guidance. For example, this slide is a depiction of a water quality forecasting system that provides probabilistic predictions about an adverse water quality event in the future, not unlike seeing a 50% chance of rain this weekend. The process of repeatedly generating forecasts, like weather forecasting, is called near-term iterative forecasting. Here we define a forecast as a probabilistic prediction of the future. Iterative refers to generating repeated forecasts that are able to be evaluated with data, enabling new forecasts to re reflect the knowledge gained from the evaluation. Finally, near-term refers to forecasts with a time horizon that allows for evaluation within the daily to decadal timescale. The generalized forecasting cycle can be used to highlight the diverse roles that exist in the field of ecological forecasting. The forecasting cycle begins with the development of ecological model, whether sim a simple empirical model or a complex mechanistic model that is, used, uh, that is designed to be repeatedly executed in a computational environment. That model is then used to generate a forecast. Next, data is obtained from the observational network and compared to the forecast. The forecast is then updated with the observations using a statistical analysis so that the next forecast has a starting point that is as consistent as possible with the current conditions and that the model calibration in many cases updates through time. Forecasts are archived for future analysis and communicated to the decision maker in a form like visualizations or web apps that have been co-developed to maximize utility in their decision-making process. As the forecasting cycle is repeated with many models that differ in their hypothesized views of ecological processes, the successes and failures of the different forecast models help advance our foundational understanding of ecological dynamics. Finally, over time, the successes and failures of the forecasts can guide refinement of the observational network to better constrain model forecasts in a cost-effective way. To provide an example, my collaborators and I are generating 16-day forecasts of water quality each day in a drinking water reservoir in Virginia. Every day, we remotely download meteorological and observational data from the reservoir. These data are used to run a mechanistic lake ecosystem model to predict current conditions at the reservoir. These predictions of current conditions are compared to current observations from in situ temperature and water quality sensors using a method called the ensemble common filter. This filter updates the model predictions based on the observations to set the starting point for a 16 day forecast. Then multiple weather forecasts uh, called an ensemble from the NOAA forecasting system are used as inputs into the forecast to represent uncertainty in future weather. After completion of the 16-day forecast of water quality variables like temperature, oxygen, and chlorophyll A, 
The forecast output is pushed to GitHub and the data are processed individuals into visualizations that were co-developed with the Water Authority managing the reservoir. These managers can use this information to make decisions like changing the depth to withdraw water from or changing the stock of chemicals in the treatment plant. Finally, the process of developing the forecasting system has already led to improvements to an open source lake ecosystem model used by many researchers in a range of applications. Increasing the application of forecasting in ecology is a win-win because it simultaneously advances understanding through the iterative testing of hypotheses embedded in the models and by advancing applied science through the generation of actionable information that support decisions. Achieving this win-win is a grand challenge for the field of ecology. Achieving the win-win requires building on lessons learned from the meteorological forecasting community. For example, we know that weather forecasts strongly depend on weather observations. Modern weather forecasts began with the invention of the telegraph, whereby information could travel faster than the actual weather. An upwind town could telegraph a downwind town that rain was coming. Now weather forecasts are built off a globally coordinated set of observations, including those from satellites that are collated every six hours to iteratively update complex models running on supercomputers. This relentless cycle of forecasting, adding more observations, improving how data and models are statistically integrated, and updating the processes and equations in weather models has provided us an additional day per decade in forecast horizon. As this figure shows, a 10-day forecast now has the quality of a seven-day forecast in the 1980s. Advancements in the observational system have been a huge driver of improvements in weather forecasting. We're now a diverse array of measurements, each representing a small, imperfect snapshot of the weather system, but together can paint a complete, if not hazy picture, is available in near real time. Ecology is beginning to have such an observational network. With the wide-scale deployment of connected environmental sensors, openly available data, and coordination of observations across large scales, the National Ecological Observatory Network, or NEON, represents a leap forward in observational capacity necessary to support the continued improvement of our ability to produce ecological forecasts that advance basic and applied objectives. NEON is an NSF-funded project to collect standardized data across the U.S. It includes 81 sites in 20 ecoregions with terrestrial, freshwater, and atmospheric measurements. The data are freely available as 181 data products, and the project is envisioned to have a 30-year horizon. Ecological forecasting was in the original vision for NEON, and now that the construction of the network is complete, it is time to start to turn that vision into reality. Today, you will hear from NEON staff about the different data products through the lens of ecological forecasting. But observations alone will not advance our ecological forecasting capacities. We need human networks of ecologists, physical scientists, computer scientists, statisticians, decision scientists, engineers, resource managers, and many others working together, engaging in the practice of ecological forecasting. A robust community of practice will result in more forecasts from a diversity of perspectives and approaches that engage more partners, allowing us to discover what is predictable in nature and what predictions are most beneficial for society. To create this community, the ecological forecasting led by Mike Dietz was launched in 2019 as a grassroots consortium aimed at building and supporting an interdisciplinary community of practice around ecological forecasting. To formally organize the ecological forecasting around the community around the challenge of harnessing neon data, we successfully proposed a research coordination network to the National Science Foundation. Research coordination networks are programs, typically five length, years in length, designed to galvanize the uh, research community through meetings and workshops rather than, rather than through directly funding research. So our overall goal here is to create a community of practice that builds a capacity for ecological forecasting by leveraging NEON data products. To provide a practical focal point to help the network achieve its objectives, we will be hosting the NEON Enabled Forecasting Challenge, or competition. The challenge will be a set of defined protocols for submitting forecasts of NEON data before that data is collected. 
the submissions will be compared to other forecasts and to observations. Submissions can use their preferred modeling framework, and we envision having challenges for different NEON data products from a range of ecological systems and scales. Forecasting and data science challenges are increasingly used to improve predictive capacities and to understand strengths and weaknesses of different methodologies. For example, challenges have been used with penguin population data, remote sensing of vegetation, carbon fluxes, for diseases like dengue and COVID-19, and are used by the business community in worldwide competitions that allow talent discovery. In our vision, the ecological, uh, the NEON forecasting challenge is a means to advance larger objectives in ecological forecasting. A NEON forecasting challenge requires standards for documenting and archiving forecasts, which is a general need by the community. A NEON forecasting challenge requires training materials and educational materials to increase the number and the size of the community that's uh, contributing forecasts. And this is a general need by the ecological uh, forecasting community. A NEON forecasting challenge requires new software tools for accelerating the process of generating and evaluating forecasts, a general need by the community. NEON forecasting challenge requires engaging with federal agencies and other partners to maximize the utility of forecasts, a general need by the community. And finally, a NEON forecasting challenge will provide the foundation for multi-forecast synthesis that advances our understanding of what is predictable in nature, a common goal of the community. Beyond this broad vision, we aim for the specifics of the challenge to be developed you know, uh, as a community. Which brings us to this virtual meeting. Again, we're excited to have everybody here. The workshop for the next two days, about 10 hours of meeting time, are to identify specific NEON data products to be used in the forecasting challenge, present and discuss standards for archiving ecological forecasts for submission to the challenge, develop a roadmap for the ecological forecasting, evaluation, rules, partners, non-NEON uh, data that could be used, et cetera. Identify uh, software, methods, educational needs to support the NEON forecasting challenge, and identify partnerships with stakeholders and forecast end users that can leverage NEON-enabled forecasting for decision support. To accomplish these goals, we have a series of one hour long sessions with talks, small group breakouts, and polls. Day one is focused on foundational building, with day two focused on developing the specifics of the forecasting challenge and looking towards the future of this network. Day one begins with a session on the supply side of NEON-enabled forecasting, that is the supply of data to support the forecasting efforts. Session two is focused on the demand side of NEON-enabled forecasting, that is a need for forecasting prod products by agencies and other partners. Session three is, is focused on providing background for developing a forecasting challenge. Finally, session four is focused on updates from working groups, student association, and international chapters from the Ecological Forecasting Initiative more broadly. We hope this session leads to continued growth in the grassroots working groups within EFI. The first three sessions will each include a breakout session. Each breakout group will add uh, notes to an aggregation poll. The questions you will be addressing are, what NEON data products are you most interested in forecasting or using forecasts of? What products are needed for what decision or application and by what end user? And how could uh, this be NEON enabled in a broad sense? What challenges are most important to overcome as we design a successful NEON forecasting challenge? To help build community in a virtual meeting, the breakout groups will be small. It will be randomly assigned groups of less than 10, with everyone having a different group each of the three breakout sessions. This will allow you to interact with numerous others that share your interest in ecological forecasting. The first five minutes of each breakout session will involve having each person answer a, an icebreaker question with the three questions shown here. In particular, the question about your role in the broader community of ecological forecasting will require you to reflect on where your interests lie in the forecasting cycle as discussed and shown here uh, earlier in the talk. We hope that everyone attends the entire workshop. However, we understand that many have time constraints or are primarily interested 
and an introduction to NEON and ecological forecasting. As we transition from day one to day two, we'll ask you at the end of day one if you plan to attend day two so that we can set up breakout groups in preparation for day two. Day two will include one talk on meteorological drivers that are available from NOAA to support ecological forecasting and three longer breakout sessions focused on developing the NEON forecasting challenge. That is identifying data products, rules, protocols, cyber infrastructure requirements, and partners. Finally, we will discuss the future direction of the Research Coordination Network by identifying software and educational needs in support of the NEON forecasting challenge that we could develop as a community.